physical, some of you might be dealing with something that's mental, some of you are dealing with something that's spiritual or, or something that you just can't explain to any human on earth. But God is the overcomer. And God's name is above any other name. And if you have something that you need to give to God this morning, we have some ladies and gentlemen that are up here that would love to pray with you, to agree with you. So if you're a man, please come down and meet with one of our men. If you're a woman, please come down and meet with one of our women. Pray with him and let us know how we can agree with you in prayer and in faith that the Lord is going to have the final say in this. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's worship.
Christ is risen Bow down before Him For He is Lord of all See hallelujah Christ is risen Oh, sing what a
with the hiding, a reason to it. My heart found a search, my soul found a friend, so I'll run to the Father again. Let's just lift our hands this morning and let's thank the Lord. Lord, I just thank you today. I thank you, God, for your blessings. Lord, bless this service. Lord, do mighty things in this service. Touch every life, every home, every family, all of our futures, oh God. We just love you. We celebrate, God, the goodness of the Lord. Bless this day. Bless this day, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord an applause today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You love the Lord? Amen, amen. Why don't you turn, greet the people that are standing there around you. Welcome to Crossroads Fellowship. So good to have all of you that are joining with us today online. Pray the Lord bless you and do big things in your life as well. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, we're going to go to the Lord this morning, and we're going to uh, just thank Him for all of His goodness and bless Him with our tithes, our offerings, and uh, thank Him for all the good things that He's done. Has the Lord been good to you this week? I said, has the Lord been good to you this week? Amen. Amen. He has, he has been so good. And, uh, you know, the Bible tells us that God loves a cheerful giver. Nobody ever loves receiving a gift when somebody is made to give something, right? You know, you know you, have you ever had to do that? You ever had to, your parents say, go ahead, give it to him. You know, you were invited to a, a birthday party as a little kid, and you've seen a kid give a present, but the kid really wanted to keep the present. I really want to keep this. This, is, this was fun. Mom let me pick it out, and, and I really would like to have it myself. And, but there's something about when you're the one who celebrates, you're the one who gives, and you want to give. And that's the way we should give when we are, are paying tithe or giving in missions offerings. And uh, we should celebrate. We should be, it should be our worship. We shouldn't be worshiping the gift, but we should be worshiping the one we're giving to. Amen? Amen. So this morning, I'm going to lead you in the tither's blessing. Again, we have ways that you can uh, give. You can join us in the uh, in giving here at the front or there at the mezzanine level with the containers. You can come drop your offering in, use an envelope, uh, or you could give online using our app there at Crossroads Fellowship. And uh, on the app store, look for that little logo in Houston. That's the one that you want, Crossroads Fellowship Houston. Or you could give it the back, drop it in the drop boxes in those slots, okay? Are you ready? Come on, I'm going to lead you this morning in the tither's blessing. And as I do, let's celebrate what God's doing in our life, our homes, our families, our futures. Amen. As a man of God, called by God to pastor this great church, having oversight of your souls, I bless you today in the name of Jesus Christ. I proclaim financial increase upon you and your household. I call in jobs for those of you who are unemployed. I call in better jobs for those of you who desire and need them. I bless you today for a breakthrough where what has been clogged and restricted would begin to normally flow again. Because of your obedience in this tithe and offering, I declare God's favor to be upon you so that those things that have been tied up in the court, such as inheritances, settlements, and estates, be released so that you may enjoy for what God means to be rightfully yours. God has stated that he wishes you to prosper. So therefore, I speak a blessing to come upon those of you who work in sales and commissions, that deals and opportunities be attracted to you, and that God prosper you in an extraordinary way. I speak over this giving congregation that opportunities for advancement will come to you. I also call forth raises and bonuses as needed. I call back to your residences, wallets, and bank accounts. What Satan attempted to steal from you, as with Job in the Bible, I speak that you be restored double what was lost or stolen. Because the Lord rejoices over his children, and he delights to see us happy and blessed. I pray today that the Lord will cause you to find 
money unexpectedly. He'll bless you and surprise you with unexpected checks in the mail right out of nowhere. For those of you that God has blessed as entrepreneurs, may your mind be inspired with God ideas and inventions so that you may prosper. For those of you who own your own businesses, may the blessings of God be so abundant that your company can bless its employees with good pay and package benefits. I speak a spirit of abundance upon this congregation that God miraculously bring you out of debt so the stress of debt and the burden of debt will release your mind and that you can come into a new peace and a new reality of financial freedom so that you and your house may serve God in newness and joy. May you and your house begin to enjoy plenty so you may give liberally and generously in offerings as well as missions and on to the poor. I bless you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Now let's celebrate what the Lord has done. Amen? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Welcome to Crossroads Fellowship. It's great to have all of you here. Stand with me today. We're in our series on forward. And uh, what's holding us back? Anything holding you back today? Anything holding you back from moving forward with the Lord? And that's a, that's a, that's a core question to our relationship with Christ. Is there anything that's holding you back? And as I read this scripture here in Luke chapter 9, this is one of the most powerful calling out scriptures in the New Testament. This is Jesus in Jesus' words speaking to us. And he says this in Luke 9. And he said to all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words. Of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. Father, I pray over today that, Lord, as you call us out, as you 
Declare to us to take up our cross. Follow you, Lord. I pray today that, Lord, that the drawing of the Holy Spirit will put some things in perspective in our life. That, Lord, we need to make you Lord of all or not Lord at all. I thank you, Lord, and I praise you for today you are our Lord. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A hundred years ago, missionaries go into the foreign field, purchased one-way tickets. There was no return planned. They packed their things in coffins. Their luggage, their clothes were packed in coffins because they intended that they would never return. They would never come home. A.W. Milne was one of those missionaries. Headed to the South Pacific, to the islands where native headhunters had martyred all that had gone before him. His coffin was packed, and with all that he had, he arrived. And for 35 years, he lived among those tribal people, and he loved them. And when he died... The tribal leaders buried him in the middle of the village with this epitaph on his tombstone. When he came, there was no light. And when he left, there was no darkness. That's a pretty powerful statement. When you were hired at your job, there was no light. But when he left, there was no darkness. You are a missionary wherever you are. You're a missionary in your neighborhood. You're a missionary at your job. You're a missionary at your school. This man, this A.W. Milne, he was all or nothing. He was willing to go forward. He was willing to step out of his comfort zone. And God may not have called you to go to the other side of the world, but maybe he's called you to go next door. Maybe he's called you to be a missionary right where you're at. And you say, well, what if they don't receive it? What if they don't accept it? What if they don't believe in me? What if, they, what if they're rude to me? When did, we, when did we start believing that God wants us just to play it safe? There's nothing safe about the gospel. Jesus didn't die to keep us safe. Salvation is not an insurance policy against going to hell. He's called us to go. He's called us to go. I would love to issue a holy dare to this church today. I'd love to issue a holy dare to you today. In the 1800s, there was a humble little uh, shoe salesman who heard such a dare on on a Sunday when he was listening to a preacher, and the preacher's name was Charles Spurgeon. And Charles Spurgeon gives this dare. The world has yet to see what God will do with and for and through and in and by the man who is fully and wholly consecrated to him. That young man was D.L. Moody. D.L. Moody was one of the greatest soul winners of all time. He leaves an imprint on his generation. People will not forget very soon the footprints of D.L. Moody. Everywhere he went, people were getting saved. Lives were being changed. Millions are touched. Thousands saved around the world. People are, are, are born into the kingdom because of the passion and the fire of, of D.L. Moody. And still today, the world has yet to see what God will do with and for and through and in and by the man or woman who is fully and wholly consecrated to him. My question to you today is why not you? Why not us? Why not now? I look at our master's students and, you know, we would say, well, they're supposed to do this kind of stuff. They're so, they have given themselves, set themselves aside that this is what they're supposed to do. And sometimes we do that. This is what the pastor is supposed to do. And we don't see ourselves in the ministry. We're all in the ministry. 
We're in the ministry of seeing people saved and pulled out of the pit of hell. We're, we're, we're all ministers of the gospel. We are helping carry and we're helping serve people. We've been speaking on this moving forward, and today this text is a powerful text. This is not a text that you can water down. It's not a text that you can, it's, it's not a feel-good message. It's not, a, it's not a, a message when you leave church today, you go, boy, I just feel, whoo! Man, pastor was funny today. There's nothing funny about crucifixion. When we see Elijah following Elijah, and we preached about that. We see him taking and going after him and following the man of God. I want a double portion of what you've got. There's a cost to that. There's a cost to having a double portion. Benaniah, the first one to say yes. It sounds great. He took a spear from a, an Egyptian man, and he, a, a warrior, and he, and he kills him. Kills these two lion-like warriors that are coming in to attack. He jumps in a pit on a snowy day, and he kills a lion down in that pit. And I mean, all of those things, they sound so great and grandiose and so wonderful. And I want to be that warrior. But there's a commitment to that. He's the guy that you don't have to beg. You don't have to convince. You don't have to preach a long sermon. You just say, I, need, I have a need, and I need somebody to go do this. He's the first to get up, and he's the first one to say, I'll go. He's the picture of a front row leader. And there's David. David, a man after God's own heart. A, a, a young man, God's looking. God's looking for young men and women. God's looking for people who will say, I'll commit my life. I'll follow the Lord. I'll serve the Lord. I pray that in years to come, if the Lord tarries, that there would be young men and women who would say, I, I was in Pastor Mike's church. I was at Crossroads Fellowship. And you could not sit in a service and not feel the fiery preaching and not know that God loved the sinners and God wanted wants the church to be the evangelist today to carry the gospel around the world God is looking for us to step out from the the common and and go into the uncommon step out into the in the realm of the spirit step out into the realm of the power of God and watch God do great things in your generation David, this young man, it says, then Samuel took the horn of oil in 1 Samuel 16 and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. He was never the same. If we go back into the world the same as we came out of the world, we didn't get anything when we were in the house. We didn't get anything. We didn't receive anything. We're, no, we're not different. What's the difference in you now and 10 years from now? Is it that Christ came into your life? He changed you. He saved you. He put your feet on a rock. Your life was full of sin. It was full of trouble. It was full of heartache. It was full of all kinds of stuff. And David is anointed and he is never the same. He's considered the least among his brothers. See, the anointing changes your future. The anointing, the Holy Spirit changes us. We are no longer the same. It breaks through things. The anointing that's on you, the anointing, the, the Spirit-filled believer, there's a, there's a different. Strongholds are destroyed. Giants are brought down. Kingdoms are subdued. The Spirit of the Lord changes us. Man, we need to be those Elishas, those Elishas today. We need to be that double portion believer, that one that says, Lord, I don't want to, I don't want to be just satisfied with, with maybe a portion of, 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 I just want a little bit of what the generation in front of me had. But there were some things about that generation in front of me that I think they were a little too fanatic. They were a too, little too far gone. See, we don't want a double portion. We want a quarter portion. We want a we want a, a fraction of what the, the generation before. I want to see a generation rise up and say, I believe there's more that God would do than what God did in my Callard's day. I believe there's more than what God did in his day, and he's going to do it in my day. That's the kind of fire. That's the kind of hope that I pray for. This Benaniah, who's the first to step forward out of the crowd and say, you can count on me. The kind of same 
courage over there at the Alamo when, when they say that, that Travis drew that line in the sand. There's somebody, somebody had to be the first guy that stood across the line and said, count me in first. It's one thing to be counted in the crowd, but it's one thing, it's a whole other thing to be the first one, to be, to be that person that's set apart, that person that has the seal and power of God on your life. There's a word that the, we, we've gotten away from, and it's this word right here, and it's the word sanctification. It's a big word. <laughs> when you hear the word sanctification, you think, man, that's huge. What does sanctification mean? It means you've been set apart. Well, pastor, it's okay for you to be set apart, but, you know, I still got to work. I still got a job. I'm still human. I understand that you can be human and you can be set apart. You're, set up, you're a vessel that's, but we've been set apart. There's a deeper consecration. That's another word, consecration. Consecration means to be to set yourself apart for his service. I'm consecrated. It has been devoted. It has been given. Consecration demands full devotion. It's surrendering all of you to all of him. I'm surrendering all of Mike to all of him. I want to be more like him than I'm like me. I want, him to, I want him to sense and know there's a hunger and there's a, there's a desire I want to be like him. Consecration is going all in and all out for the all in all. I want to be all in all. I want to be with him. I want to be like him. I want to be close to him. I want all that he has. Jesus said this in verse 23. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself Take up his cross daily and follow me. Now, I just want you to think about that for a moment because the whole point there is crucifixion. We understand and know what crucifixion is, right? Crucifixion is not a beautiful picture. Crucifixion is a horrible, horrible thing. Someone being marched out of the city on to a plateau or some place to... To, and, and many times they would take just a, a regular olive tree. They would trim some of the branches and they would nail somebody to that tree. They would just nail them to the tree. Some, some there would be a cross beam, that, there would be a beam that would already be in the ground where many other people had been crucified. And then you would be taken out there and you would be raised on a beam and you would be, you would be attached to the, to, the, to the vertical beam. You would have a horizontal beam. And you would be crucified. Some people would actually carry their entire whole cross. We, we carry the picture with Christ that that is probably how it happened with Jesus. That he, he carries his cross. He, he carries that beam. And the humiliation of going to that place of execution. Knowing the other end of the journey here is death. It's death. And in Luke 9, Jesus doesn't, he doesn't say, well, everything's just going to be hunky-dory. It's going to be just really beautiful. It's going to be really whatever. He throws down the gauntlet and he says, who's with me? Who's with me? Who's out? Who's not, who's not going? Who's in? Listen, if Jesus can die on his cross, at least we can carry ours. Because he's done the hard work. Yes, we are headed to heaven. Yes, we are going to. There is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Yes, there are all these wonderful and amazing things. And this morning, my heart is heavy because I fear too many times that people, we play church. And we've, known, we've learned how to play it really well. And we've learned how to play the part and we're not the part. We're not living the life. Come on. Until we die to ourselves, he can't really start living in us. Until we start putting some things on the line and saying, Lord, I put this on the line. This is no longer me, but this is you. And if, and if Jesus is not Lord of all, Jesus is not Lord at all. He can't just be Lord over one part of our life. He can't just be Lord over, over okay, he's Lord over Sunday. He's Lord over Sunday. We'll give him Sunday. 
We're going we're gonna to do a, and, and listen, I understand, and I know you people that come to the 9 o'clock, you are saved, right? So, so I'm practicing for that 1030 crowd right now. I, I'm getting ready. I'm greased up, and I'm ready to give them all I've got. Because you're saved, right? <laughs> it's all or nothing. The problem is we want God on our terms. We want God on our terms. We'll never move forward because we want to pick and choose what we're going to do. We pick and choose the level of following that we're going to make. I'll serve God on my terms. I want it my way. Anybody uh, ever bought anything and it had to be your way? Well, it should be. You're buying it, right? Right? You're going in, you're sitting down with a person selling something, and you're saying, I want this and I want that, and I'm, but you know what? That costs. That costs. Well, I want you just to throw that at, well, it's still, it costs somebody. We've got to work the cost of that in somewhere. Here's the deal. You only get a relationship with God on God's terms. We don't get it on our terms. I don't get my relationship with God on, you know, that I'm going to just say to the Lord, this is the way it's going to be. This is what I'm going to do. The beauty is, the moment you bow your knee to Jesus Christ, here is the... Here's the whole center of this message right here. The, the moment that you bow your knee to Jesus Christ, your sins are transferred off of you onto him. Christ has now taken the burden of your salvation. Yes, you don't go to hell. Yes, you have a divine future with the Father. Yes, he has prepared a place for you. The, the end, it is endless, all the glorious, wonderful, powerful things he's done. But let's not just receive that and stop. And that's what's happened too many times in the gospel in today's world. That's what's happened too many times in today's world. It's what do I get, how do I get it, and how do I get more than what you've got? The gospel, the good news, is mercy is not getting what I deserve, the wrath of God. That's the gospel. I don't get what I deserve because I deserve the wrath of God. I am a part of Adam's lineage. I am a part of the, of the, of the line of Adam, and I deserve to go to hell. My, my great, 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 however many greats Adam is back there, he committed sin. He and Eve committed sin. That sin has been transferred to me. But when I accepted Jesus, grace is getting what? I don't deserve the righteousness of Christ. It's no longer my righteousness. It's his righteousness. All my past is forgiven. All your past is forgiven. All your mistakes are gone. All those things that you did wrong, all that stuff, it's over. God calls it even. Even. You are righteous because of Christ. And what that means is there is nothing he will hold against you anymore in that past that you've done. Now, where do you go from here? Pick up your cross and follow me. Come on, go with me. He said, it's like he says, I'll take the blame for everything you did wrong and give you credit for everything I did right. Read that again. I'll take the blame for everything you did wrong and give you credit for everything I did right. Any, any, anybody ever end up ta having to take credit for something somebody else did? And maybe it wasn't good credit. You know, when you play the game of credit, sometimes somebody not, their credit's not good and they need your credit to help them. Like you're going to buy something. Have you ever done that? You ever bought something and you need somebody else's credit to help you? Like your name's not that good? Right? I told you all about the time I wrote a hot check. Did I tell you about that time I wrote a hot check as a kid? I had a brand new bank account. I wrote like a $2 something check for some gasoline. This is a million years ago. And... Uh, 
bought some gas at the DNM, and I and I and I, and I, I it was a hot check. In real, I mean, you write a two dollar hot check, you're in bad shape. <laughs> I wrote a hot check for two dollars. The bank sends me a notice. I I got a fifteen dollar insufficient fund charge. And I told my mom, I said, would you look at this? Look at this. I'm a teenager. I said, would you look at this? The bank charged me $15. I'm taking my money out of their bank. (laughs) She says, son, looks like you don't have any money. That's why they're charging you $15. (laughs) And the place charged me also. The place where I wrote the hot check, they charged me $10. And I had... I'm $27 in the hole for $2 of gas. Right? And so the, so the thought there is, is, that, is, is that the credit, what your credit is worth, the, what it, what's been credited to you is of no value. But when he puts his name on the line, he says he has sufficient to do this. He is sufficient to move forward. He's sufficient to go forward. See, I don't move forward on my own power. I don't have it. I don't have it. But Jesus does. And when I say, Lord, I can't do it on my own. I, I, you know, when I'm weak, I'm strong. I need you, Lord. I can't do this by myself. I need your help. I need you to be with. That's why we call it the gospel. It's God, God's good news to us. You can't buy the gospel. It can only be received. So it's this gift, it's this grace of God. And the problem is we want everything God has to offer without giving anything up. We want to buy in without selling out. We want to say we're fully committed, but we've committed nothing. That's the problem. Most of us spend our lives accumulating the wrong things. We're working on the wrong direction. And it's God's upside down economy. And our logic is really backwards. You ultimately lose what you keep. And you ultimately keep whatever you lose for the cause of Christ. Case in point. Mark chapter 10. Jesus is visited by a young man. And we know that because the, the story is called the rich young ruler. As, as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one's good except God alone. And you know the commandments. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. And he said to him, teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. Jesus looking at him, loved him and said to him, now get that, he loved him and says to him, you lack one thing, go sell all that you have and give it to the poor and you'll have treasure in heaven and come follow me and disheartened by the saying he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions see on paper the rich young ruler was the perfect example of religiosity he was a very religious guy he didn't do anything wrong he was just he was a great guy and it's true it's true and let me tell you let me say this i haven't met many people possessed by demons but i've met a lot of people possessed by possessions and if we're not careful we're possessed by what we have and that take that from a guy who at one time i didn't have a whole lot in my life and i have been blessed in my life but i've also learned that whatever i have lord if you want it you can have it you can have it this guy this rich young ruler he he has it all He's young, he has money, he has power, his whole life in front of him. He, he, has a, he has a future. And he asks, what am I missing? Hear this today. What am I missing? He was religious. He does all the right things. He goes to the 9 o'clock service on Sunday, 10.30 service. 
He says things the right way. It's, it's not the sins you've committed, listen, but it's the sins of omission. It's the things, what you could have done, what you would have done, what you should have done. That's, that's the hard thing today when I face the message to the church. Because it's not the things that didn't break God's heart because of what you did. It's what you didn't do. It's what you could have done. The rich young ruler is one of the saddest stories in the Bible. Do you hear me? It's one of the saddest. He has so much potential. His greatest assets become his greatest liabilities. Because they have him. And one day the rich young ruler became the rich old ruler. And I wonder if he thought back in his life when Jesus said, follow me. And he didn't. And he remembers back to that hour. And his heart is filled with regret. Why didn't I surrender all then? Maybe it seems too radical for some. Maybe it seems over the top for some. But Jesus says it's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. Sell out. Buy in. Give your life to him today. And you won't be disappointed because you can't balance it out. You can't do enough good things to feel good about yourself and really reach the place of where Jesus gave you all that he's given you. It just never adds up. We can't be that good. We're not that righteous. Our righteousness has to be his goodness, his righteousness. Let me tell you, you won't be disappointed. We're going to celebrate with you. We're going to be excited with you. We're going to believe the Lord with you around here at Crossroads. It's like the parable of the lost treasure. When a man found the pearl of great price in a field, what did he do? He went and he sold all that he had to buy that. I'm going to buy that. He found this treasure was in this field. So he sells everything. People are wondering, why? Why Why would you do that? Because he realizes the value of what that is. And he he likens that to, to, to the gospel. So I want you to stand with me today. Stand with me today. All across this room. Romans 3, 23. The Bible says this. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All of us. All of us. Every one of us. Every one of us, all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. You're watching online today. Everybody there, everyone there, everyone here, we've all fallen short of God's glory. We're just not good. It says in Romans 6, 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 1 John 1, 8 and 9 says, If we say we have no sin, look, Pastor, I I, I do go to the 9 o'clock service service i'm not like the not 10 30 people i got up early i got here I'm, I'm saying amen i'm with you all the way but if we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth's not in us if we confess our sins he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness he will forgive us he will forgive you amen and then romans 10 says it this way if you confess in your heart Believe with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified. And the mouth one confesses and is saved. So this morning across this room with every head bowed, every eye closed, before we receive communion, I want to ask, is there anyone here today you don't know Jesus as your Savior? You don't know him as your Lord, but you want to receive him as your Lord. Would you step out from where you're at? Would you raise your hand and say, Pastor, I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Would you raise your hand across this room? I want to receive Christ as my Savior. Yes. Who else? Who else? Who else? I want to receive him. I want to to pray that prayer. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Man, this is... I don't know who this message has been for. Maybe it's been for all of us. Or maybe it's been for one. But today, the Lord is speaking to somebody in this room. Who else? Who else wants to receive Christ as your Savior? This 
morning, I'm going to open these altars, and we're going to celebrate with you. And if you raise your hand for salvation, this is not a, this is not a moment to be bashful. There, I, I saw at least one person raise their hand for salvation. And maybe this service is designed for you. Maybe the rest of us, God said, I want you to be there because you're going to celebrate with that person this morning. You're going to celebrate with that person this morning as they receive Christ. But this morning could have been just for you. Just for you. And then again, maybe this message was for all of us. That we all need to take up our cross and follow Him. It's not a day to be living lazy or lax in our spiritual life. It's a day to be counting the cost for what Christ has done for us. Maybe you're here today and you need to make a new affirmation of Christ. Maybe you've accepted Him in your life before, but there needs to be a new commitment. A new commitment. How many people in this room would raise your hand and say, Pastor, I need a new commitment. I need a new commitment. Come on. Come on, raise your hand across this room. I need a new commitment. Come on, come on. Yes, 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 yes. The economy in Houston loves the rodeo, but I'm going to tell you, the rodeo sometimes can be some of the most vile stuff that happens in this city. Instead of a ro revival, we're having a, ro a rodeo. You with me? <laughs> don't let, don't, don't be in the devil. In the devil's camp, let the Holy Spirit do something big in your life. Be in God's, be in what God's trying to do in your life. Amen? So I want this morning, our church, we're going to celebrate, we're going to clap, we're going to applaud, we're going to cheer, we're going to yell, because that's what the angels in heaven do when one person comes to the Lord. We're going to cheer and we're going to yell. And, and you know what? If you want to make a new commitment to the Lord, then I want you to step out too. I want you to say, you know, God, I just want to... One more time, I'm going to put it out here before you. And I'm just going to put my life out there, God. And I want you to work something new in me this year. I'm moving forward with you today. Are you ready? Come on. All across this room. I'm going to count the three. When I get to three, I want you to applaud, yell, scream, cheer. And we're cheering for the persons who raise their hands. Amen. Come on. Come on right now. Come on. If you raise your hand, come, 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 come. I want a new, fresh commitment. Step out. Step out. Step out, step out, come on, step out, step out, come on, come on, come, 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 yeah, come on, come on, come on, come, 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 yeah, come, come on, come on. Anybody else, anybody else, come, 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 come on, come on, they're gonna lead us in worship. We're preparing our hearts for communion. We're gonna receive communion in just a few minutes. And as these are praying here, I want you to begin to examine your heart and say, Lord, what is it you're speaking to me? What are you directing me to do, God? What are you speaking to me about, God? Come on, come on. Let's just, let's just, let's just lift our hearts to the Lord and worship as they come. And if you need prayer, you feel free to come and let us pray and believe the Lord with you today. Come. Thank you, Jesus. You are the
hearts will cry, his bones will sing. from the Lord that which I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed he took bread when he had given thanks he broke it and he said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me I want you to take that little piece of bread there and hold that and I'm going to pray Lord we realize and recognize today this bread, this wafer represents your body. Your body that is broken for us, that was that had nails driven through the hands and feet, and a crown of thorns and a spear in your side, and the whip marks, the lash marks, the slap marks. Uh, Lord, I, I just pray that Father, we can we can understand the gravity of what Jesus faced for us, of what he paid that price that ultimate price of his life that Lord we would be willing to lay our life down, that our life, our salvation is not cheap our salvation cost Christ everything it cost him all that he was, help us Lord live all that we are and all that we can, and all that we ever will be for Him. Help us put it all on the line and follow you today, Lord. And we remember today that sacrifice. And we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Would you break the bread, receive together. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Would you peel back that next layer there, revealing the juice? And hold it up. Lord, today we prepare ourselves to receive the cup, which represents your precious blood. And Lord, we thank you so much for your sacrifice. And we thank you as your blood 
poured out upon that that Judean hillside there that is your life flowed from your body that Lord you were your life was not taken but you laid it down and Lord we thank you for that we thank you that it washes away all our sin it washes away all the stuff from our life and we celebrate who you are and we thank you for who you are help us help us pick up our cross and follow you in Jesus name amen would you receive together amen amen one more time sing that song sing that again pastor michael come it's your breath. things that we don't plan on and he probably had to step out and handle something I don't know what that might have been but I would like to invite our guests our guests if you're a guest to Crossroads Fellowship uh, would you follow this young man right here follow little Chico head out across to the other side I've got some wonderful gifts that I'd love to give you love to take just a moment to meet with you also today is our guest lunch oh here you are did you look for me yeah I was coming up the ramp we have, y'all can be seated, y'all can be seated. Guests, feel free to go out there and meet Pastor Mike, get some free gifts from Pastor Mike, and guests also be in mind. If you've been here over the last few weeks and you've not attended a guest lunch, we have a guest lunch following the 1030 service and we are having meat church today. There are three briskets that are primed and ready to be eaten. They are resting, coming to temp right now. And the anointing is falling on that ice chest. Oh. I sampled a piece last night when it was in the smoker. Whoo! Thank you, Jesus. As a diabetic, I can eat all the meat I want. Uh, we have a business meeting on the 30th of this month. It'll be not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday. An annual uh, business meeting for the entire church. Uh, we have a few things to ratify. We have a few things to uh, announce. And then we're also going to be covering 
this last year's uh, financials and business uh, regards. So be here seven o'clock that evening. We'll have worship and then pastor will go right into the business meeting. Uh, we have some great, great, great things to be talking about. Uh, guest lunches today, Easter cards. How many of y'all know we are less than a month away from Easter? So we have Easter cards as you're going out today in the hallway. We've got great ushers out there that are going to be handing you some cards or tickets. These are not needed to get into the production. If you've never been a part of one of our productions, we would love, love, love for you to take these to work, take them to your neighborhood, take them to your schools, wherever you go, and pass cards out and tell people that they are invited to come with you to the production or come see you in the production or just come to the production and you'll be, I don't know, playing with kids in the candy area or whatever you're doing. Uh, we have a men's conference coming up at the end of the, the month in September. I believe it's the 29th, the weekend of the 29th in April. It's going to be at Faith in Houston. And Pastor Mike is the guest speaker that Saturday. Or, yes, that Saturday. Friday night's speaker is uh, John Bevere. And Pastor Mike is speaking on Saturday. So we want all the men in the church to go to that. It's the 360 Men's Conference. You can look that up online through Faith Church in Houston. Uh, as far as any youth life groups that are happening today for guys and girls, they just got back from Lift Retreat the last two days. So all of our leaders for that department are exhausted. They're going to go home and nap after the guest lunch. They're going to go into a brisket coma. And uh, we are not having life groups for the youth, for guys or girls this afternoon. So please don't bring your children up here. They will be up here by themselves, and we don't want that, okay? And then also, last but not least, and don't, don't, don't sleep on this one. This Friday, we have a family fun night. It's going to be a free event. It's for the entire family. The kids are throwing a huge, huge, huge night. It's going to be a family party night. So we want all of our families to come. If you don't have children, you can still come and be a part. We would love for everybody in our community and everyone in our church to be here Friday evening. I believe it starts, Ezra, at 6 or 7. 7 o'clock. Be here Friday night at 7 p.m. Bring your neighbors, bring their friends, bring whoever. And uh, my kids have been telling all of our neighbors for weeks about the family fun night. So it'll be the first time we've ever done one of these. But we look forward to having you. And uh, this Tuesday, everybody say Tuesday. This Tuesday is our first Easter rehearsal. So if you would like to be any part of Easter, please be here Tuesday night at 7 p.m. And we're going to get to work. Tomorrow we're going to start tearing out the stage. Not tearing out, but building out the stage. Tearing off all the stuff on stage. So next week you're going to start seeing a whole different church if you've never been here for Easter. And it is going to be crazy awesome. Amen? Amen. Please stand. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, bless these people. Bless everyone that is leaving and bless those with safety as they're coming, God. Lord, we pray over the next few services that we have in here today. Lord, let your anointing and let your presence rest in this place. And Lord, the people that you found life and built futures in today, Lord, let them leave here differently than the way that they came in today, God. Let us keep moving forward, keep marching forward, and keep pressing on, Lord, to the greater things that you have in front of us. God, we thank you. We praise you. We ask all these things in your precious son's name. And everyone said... Amen. We'll see you Wednesday and Friday and Sunday. Woo! This feels like heaven. Nothing is missing. I know I will be safe here in your sight. Everything, everything's all right. My heart is open. There is no distance. I know fear has no place here in your sight. This is love.
searching for We want you and nothing more Let your glory fill this place We're alive in your presence It's your heart we're searching for We want you and nothing more Let your glory See